So now we are ready to state the main theorem which will allow us to show that our definition of finite sets is unambiguous. So for this we uh, fix some notation. So our notation says that if there exists a bijection between two sets A and B, then we write it uh, like this. Okay, uh, A is in bijective correspondence with B with this double arrow and uh, f is the function that uh, implements this bijection. And if there is no bijection, then we use this cut uh, double arrow to denote that there is no bijection between A and B. So what is the theorem? The theorem says, says that if you have a non-empty set A and A is in bijective correspondence with uh, the set 1, 2 up to n for some n, for some natural number n, and if you take B to be a proper subset, so this is a proper subset of A, then B cannot be in the in bijective, bijective correspondence with the same um, set 1, 2 up to n. And also if B is non-empty, then B must be in bijective correspondence with the set 1, 2 up to P for some P strictly less than n. And this will allow us to show that um, uh, our definition is unambiguous. So let us prove the theorem. And to prove this, we use the principle of induction of induction. So it says suppose that suppose that uh, C is the set of natural numbers numbers for which the theorem holds holds and now there are two steps for this uh, induction process as you may probably already know. So first one is the base case. So this is the first step is to check that uh, n, uh, sorry, n uh, with the number 1 belongs to C. Okay, so the theorem holds for n equal to 1. Okay, n equal to 1. And the second is the induction step, which says that if n belongs to C, so the theorem holds for some n, then this implies that n plus 1 belongs to C. So if it holds for n, it must hold for n equal to 1. Then C must be equal to the set of natural numbers. So this is the principle of induction and we will use this to prove the theorem. So um, the first case, first case is that your proper subset B is empty, is the empty set, uh, then B cannot be in bijective correspondence with, with the set 1, 2, up to n. So I um, will leave this as an exercise for you to think why, why there cannot be a bijective correspondence with the empty set and the set 1, 2, up to n for any, for any n. So um, the theorem holds for the case when B is empty. Now <coughs> second case and this is our base case really, base case for the induction. Uh, the theorem holds for n equal to 1. Okay, So if um, A is in bijective correspondence with 1, Okay, and now uh, any proper subset um, of this set with one element uh, must be empty. Okay, so the only proper subset of the set with one element is the empty set, and so the theorem holds. And of course, uh, this is not in bijective correspondence with one, right? So um, the theorem holds. for n equal to 1. And now uh, we have the induction step 
So we suppose that suppose that theorem holds for some n and we have to show that n plus uh, the theorem holds for n plus 1 okay. theorem holds for n plus 1 which is to say that if a is in bijective correspondence with the set 1 to uh, up to n plus 1 and b is a proper subset of a then mm, uh, either b is empty okay either b is empty or b must be in bijective correspondence with uh, with the set 1 to up to p for some p less than n plus 1 now okay strictly less than n plus 1 so this is what we have to show now and uh, how do we show this so we have to reduce it to the case because we are supposing that the theorem holds for n for n we have to somehow reduce the problem to this case and then we um, get the proof so um, to do to do this take uh, some element a naught in b and say a1 belongs to a minus b uh, a minus b is non-empty because uh, b is a proper subset uh, of a okay so a minus b the set difference is non-empty and so there exists an element a1 and now if you take um, a minus a naught then this is in bijective correspondence with 1 2 up to n by the lemma that we proved earlier okay lemma 5.1 which said that a is in bijective correspondence with n plus 1 if and only if a minus a naught is in bijective correspondence with 1 2 up to n and now uh, b minus a naught is a proper subset of a minus a naught as uh, a1 belongs to a minus a naught but a1 does not belong to b minus a naught okay so um, so b minus a naught is a proper subset of a minus a naught now since the theorem the theorem holds theorem holds for n uh, this is our assumption from the induction step so we have two things first is that uh, there is no bijection um, of uh, b minus a naught with um, this set 1 to n and secondly either b minus a naught is uh, the empty set i mean b is the single set a naught in this case or uh, b minus a naught is not empty in which case uh, by the hypothesis of the theorem so by the theorem we have that b minus a naught is in bijective correspondence with some 1 2 up to p for some p less than n now because we are using n because um, the theorem holds for n and in this case if there, if there is a bijection f from b minus a naught to 1 to up to p for some p then by then by lemma um, 5.1 um, b is in bijective correspondence with uh, the set 1 to p plus 1 and 
similarly uh, for the first part uh, for from the first part and lemma 5.1 b is not in bijective correspondence with the set 1 to up to um, n uh, n plus 1 n plus 1 so um, we see that in either case in either case we have that b is in bijective correspondence uh, with some set 1 to up to p for some p uh, rather i should let me write m m for some m less than n plus 1 so if you go up here you have p less than n so p plus 1 is less than n plus 1 and this is our m here this is our m here and uh, if b minus a naught is empty then b is just the singleton set in which case b is in bijective correspondence with the set 1 singleton set 1 so in all cases we see that uh, the theorem holds for theorem holds for n plus 1 and this implies that theorem holds by the induction principle for all n in n so now uh, with, the, with this theorem we have the following corollary so corollary is the consequence of a theorem the corollary says that if a is a finite non-empty set non-empty non set then there is uh, no bijection of a with any of its proper subsets so just a quick proof so if b is a proper subset of a and b is in bijective correspondence with a since a is finite there exists a bijective correspondence with some 1 2 up to n for some n so with this theorem above this n is now uh, uniquely determined uh, as we will see so um, a is in bijective correspondence with this set and b is in bijective correspondence with a and so b is in bijective correspondence with this set again so you can take for example here um, so if you if you take a, a map from consider a map from b to 1 to n so this map h h is can be given by f composed with g inverse um sorry it's the other way around it's uh g uh, composed with f inverse where f is a map is the bijection from a to b okay so this is uh, this gives you a and here of course g is a bijection from a to 1 to up to n so this gives you a bijection between b and 1 to up to n and this is a uh, this is false so it's a contradiction by theorem 5.2 above okay so now uh, another corollary is the final one that we will see is that if um, a is a non-empty finite set and a is in bijective correspondence with the set 1 2 up to n for some n then um, a is not in bijective correspondence for 1 2 up to m for any 
m which is not equal to n. So let us see a proof by contradiction. By contradiction. So um, suppose that a is in bijective correspondence with 1, 2 up to m and a is in bijective correspondence with 1, 2 up to n. So where m is not equal to n. So let me call this um, f1 and f2. These are the two bijections and m is not equal to n. So either m is less than n or n is less than m. So suppose that suppose uh, m is less than n then then this set 1 2 up to m is in bijective correspondence with 1 2 up to m n since one can take this function h to be um, so here f f1 is a map from a to 1 2 up to m and f2 is a map from a to 1 2 up to n so if you take f2 composed with f1 inverse then this is a bijection and this is a contradiction this is a contradiction since this set 1 2 up to m is a proper subset <coughs> of 1 2 up to <coughs> n and so our um, assumption that they, these two exist is false and so uh, the corollary is proved now uh, a couple of properties important properties of finite sets one is that the finite union of finite sets is a finite set and secondly finite Cartesian product of finite sets is a, also a finite set. So I will not give the proofs uh, for these two properties but if you want you can uh, see the see the proofs in Munchrus's book and if you have questions you can ask me in the discussion forum and um, these are the two uh, important properties of finite unions uh, finite sets um, that we will need going forward so this ends the discussion on finite sets and in the next lecture we will discuss about um, infinite sets.